Hello everyone, Brian Shea from Game Informer here, and today we are talking Tekken 8, and who better to do that with than executive producer Katsuhiro Harada and producer Michael Murray. Thank you both for joining me today. We're gonna to be talking all about Tekken 8, but first, I wanna get some high-level questions out of the way. How do you both view the state of the fighting game genre in 2023? So Harada was just saying that uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, major, uh, well, installment, newer installments from the major fighting game franchises this year, so uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, me personally, yeah, the same. I mean, we already know Street Fighter, right? There's another one I heard was uh, maybe coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just, and also esports in general, for example, EVO and those big tournaments have gotten huge. So those two combined, I think, are going to uh, make a very interesting year. Absolutely. You know, back in like maybe around the time that Tekken was becoming more and more popular, back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, 3D fighting games were more common. And now it seems like Tekken is the one that is really kind of standing atop the mountain, whereas franchises like Mortal Kombat have gone back to the 2D uh, realm of fighting. How do you view the state of the 3D fighting games? Yeah, I know. It's perhaps that. Uh, at a certain time when we were developing technology, we had the polygon-based uh, character models was kind of a huge leap at the time, uh, which really fostered 3D fighting games, right? Uh, but then for some reason, you know, kind of when we look around, it's just tech in more recently. Uh, although even the 2D fighting games, the way they're created is uh, now they make 3D character models, although they're on a 2D plane. So being able to back, walk in the foreground or background uh, in a true 3D fighting game, uh, and that meaning, in that sense, there's, there's basically Tekken's the only one with a, a up-to-date installment, perhaps. So it, it's kind of sad uh, that that's the case, you know, because for 2D fighters, you have uh, indie studios creating their own thing on one, one hand of the scale, and then on the other end of the scale, you have Mortal Kombat, which is probably sinking so much money into their development, right? Uh, but we don't see that for 3D fighters. Um, it, it's just Tekken, and maybe just because of the cost uh, of creating one character model even in, in the environments that you can look at from any different camera angle, uh, the cost might be so prohibitive that it's it, uh, it's hard for smaller studios to do. Do you have a favorite uh, 3D fighting game franchise you'd love to see come back? Uh, <laughs> ちゃんと、なんていうかね、あの、最新作の、最新作、いわゆる5K mm -hmm. yeah. was going to be Virtual Fighter. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they they're doing stuff with uh, 5 recently, right? But like, you know, proper like 6, like a brand new one, that would be something cool to see. So Looking forward to see if uh, Sega is, is more passionate about that. So we'll see. I love five as well, so I'm right there with you. Oh, um, also, Mortal Kombat had a time where they were kind of going that direction and it appeared. Uh, it would be quite interesting to see what they would do in a fully fleshed out 3D environment. Especially with the technology that we have now where it's like so far beyond where Mortal, when, when like Mortal Kombat was making those full 3D games. I mean, you see it with Tekken 8, just the, the technology is unbelievable now, what you can do with the fidelity and the environments and everything. With this being the first Tekken game developed exclusively for this new hardware, or actually for this new hardware in general, how do you kind of take advantage of this new horsepower that you have at, at your disposal? There, there's so much stuff that we wanted to do and we were able to do this time. Um, most of it that you can see right now, and I, I think you've had your hands on the game, the stages, we mentioned how much uh, 
effort monetarily and time-wise and resources, etc., goes into creating one stage in a fully 3D environment in the 3D fighting game. Uh, but what we've been able to do with the power of these new machines uh, in the fact that, first off, change is a big keyword, right? Whether it's changing because it's being destroyed elements, etc., mm. or changing because of the time goes from, for example, evening uh, into night. Uh, the lighting and everything, the atmosphere will change as a result, or even the particles of something being broken, maybe perhaps just little fine details. Uh, so when, one is the change, but another is like the, the level of detail, uh, not only just the character models and the resolution, but the effects in those little things that are breaking and the finely detailed pieces. Uh, all of these things uh, add to the experience that we wanted to provide and are able because of the extra power from the hardware. And what about from like the, the engine perspective, Unreal Engine 5 is the first time you're using that. Like, what does that do for the experience? Uh, UE5 is the It's been a, a learning experience. Your average person who doesn't develop games or work on the UE5 or, or any engine in particular would think that it's real, realistic. So it's like a movie set where it'll just automatically become uh, pretty or the smoke effects will become like just right out of the box awesome. Uh, these kind of impressions is what they have, but uh, that's not the case. You can't just add a bunch of lights like you can on a real set. Um, there's like, there's a, a light for maybe each character and not just the character, but their face or this portion or a light on this this area of this stage, but not on another stage. And it's, it's so many things you have to fine tune to finally get the look that everyone expects. It's almost like if you're thinking of like a, a racing car that has a lot of power, but you have to be really good at tuning it to, to make good use of that power. And even then, if you take it from one course to another, you've got to do a separate, wholly, uh, totally different tuning to it, just like you would for between that one stage and another to get the desired effect. So. It is a lot of power and tools available, but uh, there's a lot of things that you need to fine tune to get that desired effect. We're coming off this long development cycle of Tekken 7, keeping it alive for so many years. What would you say were the biggest lessons that you all learned from developing that game that you're carrying into Tekken 8? Seven did so well. It lasted for a long time, like you said, and sold over 10 million copies. So what that actually did to us mentally was it becomes very hard to make changes to the game for, for the next installment mm. because people love, they fell in love with Tekken 7 so much that uh, you know that if you're going to add a different number to the end of it, you have to make it some big changes, but it's very hard because you don't know if it's going to be in the direction that people will want you to go into. So it's very difficult in that regard. And what that leads into is that we can't really use any of the learnings from Tekken 7 because you have to make it such something different that people don't expect. So there isn't any learnings. You have to kind of take your knowledge of, uh, of the game, but then use that as a guide to what might they like in something that's totally new that we've never done before. And then, you know, for me personally, it's, I feel the same. It's not like we learned something in Tekken 7 that we can use in Tekken 8. It's more about every time there's always trade-offs about you can't do everything. So what do you put the priority on? And so the only thing I could think of that we learned in Tekken 7 that you could take was when you're making those choices about you have to give up on this and take this uh, to maybe make better informed decisions about what you know they might like uh, was a lot of stuff that we gained in Tekken 7 perhaps. <laughs> And Harada was, was just adding, expanding on it, that it, since he's been on the series so long also, he was almost kind of a little bit too more conservative at the start of the project for this installment. That we have staff who are 10 years or more younger than us uh, actually working on the day-to-day -day, uh, elements of the game. 
And they actually went farther in changing things and evolving things uh, than he'd originally ordered uh, in, in a good way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a good balance of, uh, between people who have experienced that success and uh, it's very difficult to, to like take a leap in a new direction. And you have those young guys who are, are and guys and girls who are good at that, uh, that there's a good balance there between the two, I think. And you know, you hear a lot of talk within the fighting game community and like people who maybe aren't considered part of the fighting game community about how they crave meaningful single player content in their fighting games. What does that mean to you and how do you go about like providing that to them? So I was just saying that this is something uh, he's actually quite confident in because before he was so high up, he was actually in charge of making a lot of those modes and bonus uh, content. Uh, in past installments of Tekken, outside of the versus, you know, one-on-one -on -one fighting experience. Uh, Tekken's always been kind of famous for, you know, the, the Tekken ball or Tekken bowling or the various modes or the even the, the mini games that you could load up, uh, you know, during the load of the game that you would play. There's all kinds of things like that in the past. Uh, and story even, you know, before uh, story modes became a staple of fighting games, Tekken always, uh, from almost the start, had the, the, the movies and whatnot that portray a, a cohesive story, right? Or we like to think cohesive. <laughs> so uh, obviously now that we're progressed through even Tekken 7 to Tekken 8, uh, you know, that's something we definitely have our bases covered with. Uh, it's just we don't have enough time, or the timing is not right at this moment to go into details about what we have planned, but you can see the pedigree there if you, if you look at the past. And obviously one of the ways that you keep people coming back long after they finish the story is by having all these amazing systems uh, you have the heat, you have the rage, you have um, the, the recoverable gauge that all kind of play in concert with one another. With so many elements kind of at play, how do you go about balancing all of these things so it feels like a cohesive experience and doesn't feel like one is overpowered over the other? I guess one way to explain the overarching kind of thought behind the process is uh, just in general that we try to avoid uh, mechanics or systems or whatever you want to call them uh, where people have to study or look through a manual to, to learn them. Uh, we try in everything that we implement to try to have players just be able to pick it up and gradually, you know, it, they just, it sinks in and they're, uh, they don't have to actively go look up anything. They kind of start to gradually pick up the different elements of the game uh, and it formulates into one cohesive experience. Uh, that's kind of like the, the overall thinking behind it. But then one example of that is the, uh, the special style that we talked about today, where it's not just for beginners, it's for intermediate and also advanced players that uh, by pushing L1, you can at any time kind of seamlessly transition between the, the mode that you know, has easy access to the, the more iconic moves for each character uh, or to turn it off at any time and have uh, the whole traditional scheme. Uh, and this allows people to pick up the game uh, pretty seamlessly, or if you already know the game, to pick up new characters if it's someone you want to try out, or maybe it's a character you're trying to learn how to be. Uh, all these different instances you might want to use uh, this is uh, a very good example of that design philosophy. Last question. Yeah. Think about all of the characters in Tekken 8's launch roster, both announced and unannounced. Who is your favorite character and are they announced yet? <laughs> so you're just saying when he likes a certain character, there's two different uh, ways of looking at it. One is like a character has their background story and the look, etc. And then another is just, you know, picking up and playing them. Uh, and if you talk about picking up and playing, there's uh, characters we've announced, some we haven't. Uh, one that we've announced is obviously King is uh, quite unique this time, one mm -hmm. of his favorites. Uh, and there are, there's one or two that we haven't announced that he likes as well. I Me mean, personally, I, I think I like Jin Kazama the most so far. Uh, yeah. um, he's drastically different. You know, throughout the series, he first started off in the Mishima style that he used in Tekken 3. Mm -hmm. And then around Tekken 4, we, he shifted to a more traditional karate approach. And this time, because of the story arc in Seven, where he gains more control over his mm -hmm. devil abilities, uh, he has a very unique move set this time. Where if you've probably seen the trailers, uh, the wing appears and then disappears, etc. I think the overall look and the design is the team did just an outstanding uh, job this time with him.
Yeah. Absolutely. And I was a gin main back in the Tekken 3 days, and I've kind of migrated over towards like Marshall and uh, mm. a little bit of Kazuya as well. So, uh, yeah, I've been playing gin for a long time. Well, like he was, I think this is behind his choice of king as well, but you'll notice that you like the normal character the way they play, but then when you try the heat moves that are specific to yeah. them, it makes you want to try this other character, <laughs> etc. So there's no end to it. Just like, you can't put down the game. <laughs> well, gentlemen, thank you both so much for your time. I can't wait to play more Tekken 8. I'm going to go play more right now, actually. Um, and thank you so much to everyone for watching. Uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe. And uh, we will see you next time.